USS Princeton and USS Samuel B. Roberts are chilling evidence of the tremendous damage mines can cause, and there is only one ship class dedicated to protecting ships and their crews from this grave danger, minesweepers. Littoral combat ships, with their mine warfare mission package, will eventually replace minesweepers, but for at least the next decade, the Navy must rely on just 14 MCMs, six in San Diego, four in Bahrain, and four in Sasebo, to keep ships and their crews safe from this potentially deadly threat. The surface force is dedicated to ensuring those MCMs are in top material condition. Minesweepers are constructed of wood. They have no magnetic signature, which allows them to cross a minefield and remain invisible to the danger below. The goal of minesweeping is to neutralize a mine by either disabling it or detonating it. There are three types of mines, floating, moored, and bottom. Floating mines are spotted visually. Moored and bottom mines require mechanical minesweeping gear, acoustic devices, or magnetic cable. One way to detect a mine is via a towed sonar cable that sits inside the ship and goes through the hull, extending more than 1,500 feet beneath it if necessary. A remote mine hunting vehicle, or RMV, with its two cameras is used to confirm the presence of a mine. Mechanical mine sweeping is one way to neutralize a mine. This type of sweeping involves a fin-like cutting device that is attached to a steel cable towed behind the ship. It severs the chain mooring a mine and causes the mine to rise to the surface. The RMV, or EOD specialist, attaches a small explosive to the mine to crack the case, allowing water to enter and disable the mine. With acoustic mine sweeping, a self-propelled acoustic device towed behind the ship makes noise that activates the magnetic field. When the field is activated and the MCM is a safe distance away, the mine detonates. Magnetic influence sweeping uses a thick black cable dragged off the fantail. A gas turbine aboard generates 5,000 amps of current that creates a magnetic field behind the ship to activate magnetic mines. The MCM class is aging, but its mission remains critical. Commodore David Chase from MCM RON2 said that while there are many challenges associated with MCM's aging hulls and equipment, new resources have been dedicated to ensuring these ships meet their expected service lives. Proving that this effort is working, three MCMs just passed in serve. The Avenger, Defender, and Champion were three ships that, uh, that came into these, these uh, in-serves with um, high hopes and, uh, and, and an awful lot of assistance, but uh, largely came down to ship's force uh, working extremely hard on the deck plates and understanding the importance of the exercise and the criticality of getting these ships back to the material readiness that we are, we are accustomed to. Over the next year, four more ships will go through in-serve, and Commodore Chase has nothing but high expectations for their success. Another MCM achievement, the performance of USS Chief and USS Warrior in a complex mine warfare exercise held in Canadian waters called Trident Fury. A one-week transit up, two weeks on station, and a one-week transit back is, a, is an enormous accomplishment, and that also attests to, to the level of uh, material readiness that these ships are now getting back to, having not been to that level in the past. So uh, again, I can't be happier than uh, the performance of my ships and my crews in that very, very important uh, multinational exercise. Commodore Chase discussed a critical piece of shipboard equipment that's been problematic in the past, the gas turbine generator. The ship that I'm standing on is scheduled to receive their, uh, the, a new uh, gas turbine generator this month. Two more will be delivered this year, uh, and eventually we're going to get to three per year, not only to fix the problems that exist in the fleet, but have uh, ready for issue gas turbine generators standing by, not only here in San Diego, but also in, in Fifth Fleet, where they are desperately needed. As on other platforms, MCMs are getting upgrades to the lube oil systems, switching from charts to electronic navigation, berthing and head mods to allow women to live aboard, and upgrades to combat systems for the sonar and mine neutralization vehicle, to name a few. Being part of an MCM crew is unique, challenging, and rewarding. One of the main career benefits for SWOs is the opportunity for early command. MCM SWOs are chosen for early command during their first department head tour. They go to a minesweeper as XO for 15 months during their second department head tour and fleet up to CO for 15 months instead of a shore tour, as in the traditional model. Lieutenant Commander Wayne Leibold, the CO of MCM Crew Reaper, said a tour on an MCM will be a career boost to any sailor. Wherever they go from there on, they're going to be the mine warfare expert. 
and they will know how vulnerable whatever ship they are is to mine warfare. And they'll be the guy that the CO looks to in case that becomes an issue if they have to deal with mines uh, in the threat environment. The term hybrid sailor, often associated with the littoral combat ship, is not unique to that class of ship. Because MCM crews are so small, typically around 80, personnel must know how to perform multiple jobs. When we do a lot of our evolutions, there are large evolutions that require all hands. So the hybrid sailor that LCS is building, uh, we already have here. We have cooks in the galley that work with weapons. Uh, we have engineers that work out on deck along with the mine men when we do sweeps and mine hunting uh, because they have to. In the future, if they decide to do a tour aboard an LCS, or if the trend towards smaller crews continues, the transition will be far easier for MCM sailors than for those on larger ships with larger crews. One crew member's valuable mine warfare experience was tapped to help develop LCS-1's capabilities. Pretty much served as uh, part of the uh, detachment uh, that was embarked on board USS Freedom, uh, developing all the testing phases on all the uh, mine neutralization vehicles that they're using. The MCMs homeported in San Diego and Bahrain employ a rotational crew system, six months in the Persian Gulf and six months ashore, then another six months at sea before returning to shore for a year. In many cases, crews swap hulls with another crew when they return from deployment. Both within the MCM community and aboard their individual ships, minemen are a close group. We asked members of Crew Reaper what is the best thing about serving aboard a minesweeper. You have a chance to cross train. Um, as far as being a mineman, I can work in combat, do work in the pilot house, work with the engineers. I've been to a few schools, but the, the best way I learn is, is hands-on. And just being here for, for a little while, I've been here for about four years, so it's, that's, that's basically how I learned how to do my job. It's a small crew, a good opportunity to meet people and, uh, and just know each other and work together as a, as a unit. Commander Liebold said that teamwork aboard an MCM is essential. Everybody here truly does have to work together to get the mission accomplished. We asked Commodore Chase what he'd say to a SWO considering joining an MCM crew. It's an incredibly important specialty and in fact I would encourage um, when, when folks are coming up from orders to consider the mine warfare force. We need, we need to bring in that expertise from outside the mine warfare force um, and, and, the, and the experience. So um, again, it's a, it's, a, it's a great line of work. I'd encourage anyone to, uh, to come into the mine warfare force.